Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a plant rescue of this philodendron birkin and um, I have just really struggled with it. So it looks like it looks absolutely terrible. <laughs> so we'll share that and then uh, we'll see what we're going to do to try to rescue it. So stay tuned if you want to see that. So the history of this plant is I think I've had it for almost eight months. I think I got it last summer, last spring or summer. And of course, every time you get things from the greenhouse, they're just absolutely beautiful. I believe I got this in big box, either uh, from Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't know which one. And um, I've seen a lot of people struggle with this. It looks really, really horrible. <laughs> so we're going to cut it back and I am going to basically take a propagation. And I'm hoping, based upon how the stem grows, that um, I could see all I could see all the nodes on the stem. And I'm hoping that I can get it to sprout uh, from the root section as well as to create a new set of roots on, on a cutting. This is going to be quite drastic, but I don't think I have much of a choice. So basically, the first thing I'm going to do is I am simply going to cut this off. I am going to cut this off about an inch above the soil line. I'm going to just go ahead and do it, not being overly picky about it. And I'm going to take off these other leaves. I'm just going to get rid of them. And my plan is to try to get it to rejuvenate. When I've had other plants with this type of a, a stem, where the nodes kind of come up. It's taken about four months for this to come back and that's fine. I can wait. I've waited this long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these dead uh, leaves that are on this to expose the little root sections here. And I'll zoom in so you can see where these little aerial roots or I don't know what you would call them where, so you can see where the roots are coming in here. And these I'm going to make sure that I put below soil. So my goal, hopefully you can see this okay. My goal is to get these roots here. See where all the roots are coming? To get that below soil. So I have a standard potting mix here and I've cut in about 30% uh, perlite to get, make sure I get it some extra drainage. I fully expect all these leaves aren't going to make it so I'm going to remove this other uh, new leaf that's coming in just to give the plant a little bit more um, chance of success to root. There's no, there is no uh, roots on here to sustain the leaves that are on here. These leaves are also white which they come in white. Uh, which makes it really hard for this plant to photosynthesize, but it, you know, again, it's an experiment. I've been switching a lot of my plants into these nice self-watering pots. Plants that require to uh, keep moist environment or lots of water tend to do better in self-watering pots, I've found. I see even the growers are starting to use self-watering pots, so I thought maybe a good idea to switch over to make sure I could keep an evenly moist soil. So I'm going to load this, the soil, and, I, and it's semi-hydrated. I'd say it's about 30% hydrated. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this in, and then I'm going to build the soil up around it. I'm going to fill the soil in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. I have found that sphagnum moss is really good for propagation as well and root development. So. I have a, a whole bucket of it that's hydrated here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out the excess moisture. So I'm going to top dress the container with the sphagnum moss kind of as a, 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 a mulch to keep it moist and to try to promote some roots. We may have a situation where the roots will start developing up the stem a little bit higher which is fine. I'm simply going to fill this reservoir with water and uh, we're going to wait and see. It'll probably take four months. The nice thing about these containers, so, some of the self-watering containers do not have a window on them, but this one has a window in it, which is kind of nice. So I can kind of see if there's still water in it. Um, 
but I'm hoping that this works really well. I'll link these containers below. Um, you can simply get them online, but yeah, it's really kind of nice. I'm trying to go with the decor, I'm trying to stay as neutral as possible. I need to purchase, I'll need to purchase some six inch containers, uh, self watering containers to get this one to go. But this, because this opening on this one is only a four inch and it's just not going to be big enough for, for whatever the rip ball is. So I'll have to order some more six inch containers and I will repot this one as well. For now, I'm just going to top dress this one as well with some sphagnum to make sure that I get to keep it moist while it tries to recover <laughs> from my hack job on this one. But yeah. I'll give it another a drink of water too, but the sphagnum moss will help really keep that moisture in. And if you're in a dry environment, in a house environment, I think that's another great purpose for the sphagnum moss. One thing to always do when you're doing propagating or plant rescue is to have a rough idea of how long you think it's going to take and then set something on your calendar. Again, I believe this is going to take four months for this to take hold and for this to come back to life. I'm going to be placing these in uh, a west facing or a bright indirect light area and I'm just going to keep an eye on them. I've got a new plant stand and I've got a bunch of those, uh, I have a bunch of propagations I'm going to do with these, these white pots so it'll all look the same. If this video is helpful, give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this content with others. Also consider subscribing so you can check out how this worked. It'll probably be a couple of months, two to four months I'm guessing, before we get to see the results of this. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.